So SIT team will be given of information like what are the job sets. The job set is nothing but the ETL job sets. What, which job to run are now given by the developer teams. So that they know what to what job to execute in the front end. So they simply right click and execute the job. So it will take automatically the ETL process or not and it will load the data into the target tables. So they don't need to do anything technically over there, just execution of the job. And uh, in sometimes most of the cases uh, that will be done by your developers only, uh, the execution of the jobs and load the data. Because uh, if something uh, failures happen with uh, jobs normally, SIT team will inform the developers saying that the job has been failed while loading the data. So that can be possible. So it's not always like the data will be loaded into the target. There might be discrepancies with the code sometimes when you might get the code to higher environments. So there might be some problem with uh, you know any parameter connections and all. So SIT team will inform development team that okay this job has been failed. There might be some issue. Please check. So okay. out of interest sometimes we can also check like what happened with your interest that ATL tools. But that is actually not our job. See, our job is to validate the data once the data is ready. So the first question comes here, the data readiness, right, as we discussed. Uh, without this, SAT team can't proceed further. Okay. So um, usually the data is already loaded into the target table and then, and then we start our work. But uh, sometimes is that job given to us also? I mean, is the ETL tester asked to do that as well, like running the jobs or doing the schedule? Yeah, that's what depends on the company organization. Now, if it's a small company, right, it's not an MNC. We don't have different teams to do all this stuff, right? So then we have to, you know, make our own uh, things like, for example, developer. We have only one developer in team. Let's assume that we have two developers and one tester. So something like that in a, in a small company, right? So ideally, you should be able to load the data as well. So they expect you to do all those stuff, right? Until unless it's a big MNC, and we have a segregated team for SAT, okay, I have 10 members in SAT. We have, to, uh, you know, 10 developers in development team. So it depends on the size of the team and the, uh, the amount of the project that we do. It depends okay. on the company to company. So in a normally in a big MNC, what happens? We have a separated SAT team. So they will take care of all these validations and all, and developers will load the data. So SAT team ideally don't involve in uh, just doing all this stuff. Okay. And once the data is ready, then we can take the source and target uh, tables. I mean, if it is source is a table, otherwise flat file is flat file, then we can uh, compare the target data with source and target and we can start validating the results. So validating the results in the sense we have to keep the business requirements aside because uh, that is the main thing, right, for a, develop, uh, for a tester. Yeah, the BTRD, the, the document is called BTRD. So normally it is called business technical requirement documents. Okay? So this will be provided by your business, BTRD. So business will say in a plain English language, their own write in technical language, right? So 1.1.1, 1 .1 1, let's say, okay, I want uh, from the source file I'm coming XYZ uh, as in my company name. In the target, I just want XYZ, uh, ZYZ, let's say, ZYZ Corporation Limited, Limited, New York, let's say. So this is my requirement. My company name is coming as XYZ. Uh, Z Corporation Limited New York. I should be uh, expecting this name in my target. So, but in source, I am only getting uh, ZYZ, okay? So, this is one of my requirements. So, let, why this requirement? Because we have a different, ETL is the purpose of loading different type of data into a single database, okay? So, the file can be, because we have a, for example, let's say Walmart is there, and it is spread across different locations worldwide. Let's say that. And they send in the data from different servers with different formats, right? It's not like the format always might be the same. So they may say just simply Walmart or simply Walmart Corporation Limited or like ZYZ, I said ZYZ Corporation. So we have to uh, combine all this stuff into a single unique identifier. That is the purpose of ETL basically. So we transform the data into a unique combination into a data warehouse. 
So while explaining about data warehouse, data warehouse concept, I will tell you why we use this uh, you know concept in data warehouse. So that is called data integrity. So data integrity means so what are the data might be coming from different sources. We are maintaining the integrity across you know various systems so that when uh, in the final data warehouse, when I say jet by jet calculation, there will be only one unique entry for the company name. We don't see multiple company names for the same thing. So we don't see like jet by jet corporation and jet by jet limited. No, we don't see all this stuff. Only we can see jet by jet corporation limited in the data warehouse. This is the final thing. Doesn't matter what are the source might be, but in the target I want to be loaded like this. Okay, that is one of the requirement. And as a tester, you will be given your source file. Let's say my flat source file is a flat file. Flat file is nothing but simple uh, text file or a notepad something like that. So flat file, you get the customer ID and jet by jet as your company name, as they expect in the source file. Sorry, jet by jet and some employee's name like uh, let's say George, New York location and the pin code. So like something like this. This is the address. So I, this is my company name. So in the tar, this is a flat file. In the target table, I can see one Jet by Jet Corporation Limited, New York, and some other values like the average salary, one, two, three, four point five six dollars, and some other value because the, this is a fact table, right? So target table might be fact table. So we can see the numbers. Fact table is nothing but some measurable values. We don't need a plain data in target, right? What is the point like loading flat file into target directly without doing anything, right? So there is no point of loading ETL, right? In that case, we just do some operations to get something like what you do with the target data. Basically, we analyze the data, right? So, for example, this company, okay, this employee, yeah, the average salary of this employee is one, two, three, four, and this is the maximum salary, and this is something like the the measurable values. These are called these are all called facts. We'll discuss about facts and dimensions in uh, ETL. That is more important, actually. So okay. this is my target table, and I'm as a SAT uh, SAT team member, ETL tester. You'll be given these two things. Okay. Now we have to validate it. Let me see. Yeah, I just my employee is one. Okay, Jet by Jet is uh, coming as Corporation Limited. So this is in line with my requirement 1.1.2, right? So when Jet by Jet company name comes, I want to see Jet by Jet Corporation Limited. Okay, fine. Yes. I'm just getting my value back into target. So this test case is passed. So for each business requirement, you write your test case in your Excel sheet. Okay. So I will tell you how we write the test cases in Excel sheet and what will be the format and all. So that will be different case again. So you can say test case number in Excel sheet. Actually, you can write text, uh, test case number one. Uh, something like uh, test case description. All these are common field in the test case uh, document. Test case description, uh, test result, uh, actual result, pass or fail, region. Something like this. These are the columns in the spreadsheet. Okay, test case description is nothing but based on one point. You can write here one point one point two. Normally in test case description you write the business. BTRD document numbers so that it will be easy to trace. So 1.1.2 1 .1 uh, description is jet by jet uh, this one something you can write and uh, actual uh, test result what you got jet by jet cooperation limited and actual result is jet by jet cooperation limited. So result is passed and uh, reason is not required if it is a pass thing right. So something like you will write your test case. So this is for one test case you will evaluate like this. Similarly you have to test all the business requirement for a project. So there could be like n number of business requirement. So basically this is very plain requirement I am saying. You can have complex requirement. So basically we have to validate all those requirements. Okay. okay. Yeah. Clear any, any questions here? This is how the process will be for ETL test. Okay. Yeah. Got it. So again, we'll have to again write each and every test case or uh, seeing the requirement like uh, yes, this will not be given by any unless it does any functional person who is writing it. 
Yes, normally functional person will help you to understand the business. They won't write the test cases. So they can give you a business understanding. If you don't understand some terminology or something about business requirement, you can directly go to a functional analyst or directly business users. So most of the time, the SAT team will interact with business. Okay, that is nothing but ETL testers will interact with business if they don't understand some requirements. Say, okay, I have I had a clarification with this requirement 2.3.4. You said, you know, something uh, for an employee, uh, we have to count the maximum number of, uh, you know, what do you say, benefits in a given year. Something like this is a requirement. So you want to understand. So we have to count all the employees or who are joining this day. Some doubts you may have about this requirement with respect mm -hmm. to the project, right? So you can talk to the business users, okay. Uh, boss, I have a requirement uh, clarification required for 2.3.4 BT. They can just only uh, recognize the numbers only. You can't directly go there with the requirement. So whenever you write an email to business, you should make sure that you know you write with full detail. So they don't need to dig that again into their BTRD document, right? So this BTRD will be with them as well. But they are the one who give us, right, to, for that requirement. So you can say uh, subject BTRD. 2.3.4 clarification required. That is the subject of your email. So it should be precise and uh, should be the, to the point. Uh, whenever you're writing to business users, right, normally. So I say, uh, okay, uh, yeah, hi, Jada, or something like that. Yes, I have a clarification required on 2.3.4 BTRD on this uh, requirement. So can you please uh, clarify further on this also? You can just you know, write an email. So what you are understanding also, you can explain an email and they can reply you saying that, okay, this is what I should be checking in the target table. Okay. So okay. based on those clarifications, you can validate your test cases. Okay. Uh, and one more question. Like once we finish uh, writing all the test cases in an Excel sheet, will there be anyone who will, you know, go through that and be like, uh, you know, covering all the functionality uh, of the requirement? Yes, yes. I, ideally it will be done by your test lead. If you are the test lead, like level of experience, uh, based on the level of experience, we will have a ETL tester and ETL lead, right? So test lead will do all kind of uh, review of your test cases, review plan, test plan. So all those actions will be taken care by the lead rules, basically. So that will again from the testing team only, not from other outside team members. So as test planning is there, right? Test planning will be done by your lead. Preparation of test strategy also will be by lead. Test case scenario by the ETL tester. Test data management, this will be done by the managers mostly. Test data, uh, like how the data should be there in SAT and all. This is a high level. Test execution, you can do that. Recording the test results as a ETL tester, we can do that. Okay. So it depends on the level of experience, they segregate these roles. So as an ETL okay. tester, I like around three to four years experience, we can have uh, write the test case scenarios, execute the test case scenarios, record the results, and validate the results. So these are all our actions. But when you come okay. to a lead position, right? So basically, you will have some team of ETL testers, four or five testers, your team. You just you know have to uh, review all the test cases and add in case of anything necessary and you write the test plan and you communicate to the business as a single point of contact because everyone in the team can't directly go to talk to business, right? So this should be a point of contact. So when business has some questions on the testing board, they should reach to someone in the team, like the normal uh, team members will do, right? So they will distribute, once the team leaders the email, they can internally discuss with the team and they can reply to business users. That's how the communication will go, right, in real time. Okay. Yeah. Instead of replying each tester to a developer, I mean user, like uh, sometimes it, it can happen because if your the tester doesn't, test lead doesn't understand what is the actual test that is done by the tester, so the tester can directly interact with the user, okay, this is a requirement I see, while I'm evaluating the results, I, I got this scenario, and you can be, give detail of, you know, what you observed in the test case and with the data or not, you can give the screenshots and the email, you can write to the business. That's how the process might be. Okay. 